I added in HMB. And HMB is a metabolite of leucine, and it's actually a stronger anti catabolic agent. But is it actually? This is my dream, time to manifest it. Hey. I've been starving on my demon slay like anorexic. Why wow. you present? Stop with all the questions. Time I teach a lesson. What is up, team? This is Quinn Stilson with the Quan Coaching today, talking all about HMB beta hydroxy, beta methyl butyrate. It's one of the most notorious supplements on the market because people claim it has the effects of steroids and then other people claim it has no effect at all. We're gonna break down the science, break down exactly how it works so we can actually understand the practical effects it has on the human body when resistance training. So let's jump right into the science and mechanism of action of HMB. The first thing you need to know about HMB is that it is a breakdown product of leucine. And leucine is the most important amino acid for protein synthesis. But what you can see from this diagram here is that very little of leucine is broken down into HMB. Studies have shown that only two to 10% of leucine is broken down into HMB. Thus, you really need to supplement with HMB if you're going to want to increase your HMB plasma concentration. So say we do supplement with HMB and now we have increased plasma concentrations. Here is where I feel a lot of videos have done a poor job explaining how HMB actually works, which will actually allow us to figure out who needs to be taking HMB. Now, there are many possible mechanisms for how HMB might work. But what I see in these videos describing HMB supplementation is they harp on the protein synthesis, the anabolism of HMB. And that is true. There's a couple possible mechanisms of how HMB may promote protein synthesis. One being that it increases the mTOR expression and two being that it increases IGF-1. IGF-1 is actually a downstream product of growth hormone and it's how growth hormone actually exhibits its protein synthesis and mass building effects downstream. However, when you look at the scientific studies and see what the scientists are harping on in regards to what they believe HMB's primary mechanism is, they are harping on HMB's ability to inhibit protein breakdown. And it does this by inhibiting something known as the ubiquitin proteasome pathway. Now, they also say, again, that these secondary effects of increasing mTOR, increasing IGF-1 are also possible benefits of supplementing with HMB. However, the main mechanism is likely an increase in this inhibition of the ubiquitin proteasome pathway. So why is that important? Well, if HMB's primary mechanism is inhibiting the breakdown of protein, you can imagine that it's most valuable when the breakdown of protein is occurring at high levels because we're going to be able to therefore inhibit that protein breakdown, increase the amount of protein we have available to maintain or even gain muscle mass. So what are these times that have a high amount of protein breakdown, a high amount of protein turnover? Well, they can really be broken down into three different categories. One of which being individuals that are new to weight training. If you're new to weight training, you're providing a stimulus to your muscles that is far and above any stimulus you've ever given your muscles prior. That is going to cause increased muscle breakdown, and in that case, HMB may be valuable, and this is what the studies have shown. The second category is going to be with individuals who are not new to resistance training, but are increasing their volume higher than what they have ever seen before. For instance, if we have a combat sport athlete, which is one of the studies that have looked at HMB supplementation, if we have a combat sport athlete who's used to training four days a week, but then they go up to training eight days a week, they're increasing their training sessions from one hour to two hours, they're increasing their weight, aka they're increasing their intensity. If we're providing a new stimulus far and above what we are used to providing, we're going to increase muscle breakdown higher than what we've ever had, and then HMB may be effective. And the third category is if we are in an energy deficit. If you're in an energy deficit, you need to be consuming more protein in order to maintain your muscle mass. If you're in that deficit, your body's going to wanna break down protein in order to gain more energy. Thus, you need to be consuming closer to 2.2 to 2.7 even grams of protein per kilogram of body weight in order to maintain the protein that you currently have and maintain that muscle mass when you're in an energy deficit. However, if you're not consuming enough protein, HMB may be effective by inhibiting protein breakdown to force your body to get energy from other sources, even if you're in that deficit.
So that's the broad strokes and theory behind who HMB is going to be effective for. Let's look at some scientific studies to really back up this theory and demonstrate how HMB actually is effective in these training populations. For instance, the first study we can look at is a 12 week study that looked at HMB and its ability to promote fat mass loss and increase fat free mass gain in highly trained combat sport athletes. What they found was that the individuals who supplemented with 3 grams per day of HMB gained 0.8 kilograms of fat-free mass compared to the placebo group which actually lost 0.5 kilograms of fat-free mass. And they also looked at fat loss. The group that took 3 grams per day of HMB actually lost 0.8 kilograms of fat compared to the placebo group which actually gained 0.7 kilograms of fat. But now what we actually need to do is look at the methods of the study to see what type of person is actually going to receive these benefits that this study is demonstrating. Well, this study had, again, highly trained combat sport athletes, but these athletes were training eight times per week, so a huge volume, a huge stimulus for a protein breakdown, and they were also only consuming 3,000 kilocalories per day, which for someone who's training eight sessions a week, and on average is 80 kilograms, which is what the study demonstrated, that's not going to be near enough to maintain your energy expenditure. So again, if you were in an energy deficit, you should be eating more protein. However, these individuals were only eating on average 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilogram of protein per day. We already mentioned that they need to be higher, up to 2.2 to 2.7 grams per kilogram of protein in order to inhibit muscle breakdown. So for these individuals who are one, overtraining, they're providing a huge stimulus for muscle breakdown, and they're also not eating enough protein, not eating enough calories, we're going to see a benefit of HMB in these populations because it's going to inhibit that protein breakdown that's going to occur based on the circumstances these athletes are putting their body into. And a similar study was completed in elite rowers in which they were given three grams per day of HMB in order to see how it affected their power output, their strength output, as well as their body composition, their fat mass, their fat free mass. And the results were similar to the study that was completed with highly trained combat athletes. Their fat free mass increased, their fat mass decreased, and their power increased all relative to placebo. However, again, when you look at the methods, what you'll see is that these athletes were only consuming 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight for protein every day. That's just simply not enough when you're going to be in an energy deficit. And again, these rowers were completing over eight training sessions per week. So again, over training, energy deficit, not enough protein, HMB is going to be beneficial compared to placebo. And the final group to talk about with the scientific studies is the untrained. The person who's new to the gym is going to be giving their body a stimulus that is much higher than they have ever seen before. That volume and intensity is going to promote extra muscle breakdown that can be benefited by HMB, which stops that breakdown from occurring and promotes more muscle gain than would be possible without the HMB. And this was shown in scientific studies as well, just as with the athletes who were overtraining. Now what you're probably asking yourself though is, Am I in those groups that are going to benefit from HMB? Am I overtraining myself? Am I not eating enough protein? At which point HMB may be effective. It may give you that decrease in fat mass. It may give you that increase in fat free mass and increase in strength outcomes. So are you in those groups? Well, I can almost confidently say that you are not, and not only are you not in those groups, but I hope that you are not in those groups. And here's why. If you're handling your nutrition and training correctly, you should never be promoting so much protein breakdown that HMB would be effective. You should be maintaining a 500 calorie deficit per day if you're trying to lose fat mass. And if you're only in a 500 calorie deficit per day, you can easily get that 2.2 grams per kilogram of protein and you won't therefore need HMB because you won't have such a high protein breakdown stimulus that you can't maintain your muscle mass.
And if you're handling your training correctly, you won't be overtraining to the point where you're providing that crazy stimulus for muscle breakdown. You shouldn't be training eight times a week unless you have really worked your way up to that. And even then, eight times per week is probably still too much, except for those elite, elite athletes, again, who have worked up to that level. So when we look at groups who are one, handling that nutrition correctly, and two, handling their training correctly, we actually find that HMB doesn't have an effect. Shocker. Specifically, there was a great study done in 2020, a meta-analysis that looked at young subjects and the effect of HMB on these subjects in regards to fat mass, fat-free mass, and strength outcomes. It found that there was no effect on any of these outcomes because the individuals, again, were eating the correct amount of protein, they weren't in a crazy deficit, and they weren't overtraining. So let's go back to our friend Kino Body at the beginning where he was trying to sell those Kino Aminos and telling us how HMB was so beneficial. Well, he actually does say that it's only beneficial if you're trying to get super shredded. And really the rest of the video is not super scientifically inaccurate. What I actually tend to think it is, is just very misleading. Because everybody maybe wants to get very shredded. He just doesn't tell you how shredded you have to be for HMB to actually be a benefit. You have to be insanely shredded. You have to be 6% or lower for this to actually be of benefit to you because at that point you're going to be eating very, very minimal calories to maintain that, at which point you'll be in such a large energy deficit, it'll be difficult to get the correct amount of protein and HMB will therefore be effective. However, for 99.9999999999999% of people, you're not gonna be at that level and you can get up to that level, up to that 8% body fat, by maintaining a 500 calorie deficit per day and therefore being able to eat the correct amount of protein and thus you do not need to spend an insane amount of money on HMB and you can instead just handle your nutrition as you should. You don't wanna be in the group that HMB is going to benefit and if you are, then that means you are below 6% body fat and kudos for getting there. And if you are at that point or you're just super sold on taking HMB, let's talk through a few more studies that will actually tell you how to take it in an effective manner if you are going to take it. So first off, you need to be taking three grams per day at least. Do not get any supplements that are claiming to give you the benefits of HMB but are only saying it's 1.5 grams per serving. You need the three grams per day. That is what has been studied in all these scientific studies we just went over. It was either three or six grams per day. Another topic to talk about is the formulation of HMB. Are you getting the HMB calcium or the HMB free acid? Well, there's been minimal studies comparing the two, but what I have seen in the studies is that HMG free acid may be a little bit more readily available, a little bit more readily absorbed than is the HMG calcium. However, in other studies, they demonstrated no significant outcome difference with HMB free acid versus HMB calcium, meaning there was no difference in the fat mass or fat free mass or strength outcomes between using either the free acid or the calcium formulations. Thus, while more studies need to be completed on which formulation is better, I would say for now you're safe getting just the HMG calcium. It's more readily available, it's cheaper. You can get this and still get just as good a benefit likely as you would with the HMG free acid. However, even if you are taking that three grams per day of HMB, again, either the calcium or the free acid version, are you actually getting a benefit that would behoove you more than maybe even just leucine would? Well, that's what Kino Body said at the beginning of this video, so that's the last thing I wanted to clear up here. And there's actually been studies that have demonstrated no difference when leucine was added to whey protein compared to when HMB was added. Thus, leucine, which is much cheaper than HMB, could be a better supplement to buy for you instead of HMB. Again, unless you are lower than 6% and you are really giving yourself conditions that are going to provide insane amounts of protein breakdown, that's when that HMB may actually be effective. So in sum, unless you are one, overtraining like you shouldn't be, eating not enough protein like you shouldn't be, and eating in a crazy energy deficit like you shouldn't be, you should not be taking HMB. Let me say that again. 
you should not be in the group that is benefiting from HMB unless you are getting to bodybuilder competition stage lean in which you're going to have to be eating hardly any calories and thus hardly any protein, HMB might benefit you. Other than that, stick to the protein, stick to the other supplements that we know work and you will be just fine in gaining muscle, losing fat, and really idealizing your body composition for your goals. So that's all I've got for you guys today on HMB. Thank you so much for listening. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or comments on any of this. I'd love to discuss further. Like and subscribe if it was helpful for you. And if you want any coaching services, please hit up the quancoaching.com and check out our monthly coaching packages as well as our annual programs. And with that, I will see you all next session.